I am the de deputy director of EMBO, uh, the European Molecular Bi Biology Organization. I'm also a member of the board of the of the Christiane Nisslein Vollhout Foundation, and I'm very happy to talk to you now about the foundation and the work that it does to support uh, female uh, or mothers in science. So, um, Professor. Uh, Nobel laureate Christiane Nusslein Vollhardt uh, started uh, the foundation in 2004 with her own money and then later was joined by the Max Planck uh, Society, the L'Oréal Foundation, uh, the L'Oréal Foundation, the Bayer Foundation, and then very many private people who now allow the foundation to support more than 40 to 50 scientists annually at steady state. So the mission of the foundation is to support female scientists with children during their PhD and their postdocs. So we all know that uh, there are very few women or too few women in leading positions in academia and research. And many of these uh, of, uh, women do quit science during their, uh, after their PhDs and their postdocs, in particular, once they start a family and have a double duty of taking care of the experiments and their children in a household. So uh, uh, Janine nisman Follard's idea was that she would uh, want to help uh, women by buying them some freedom to be able to cope with both their duties. So um, who is being supported? So PhD students from the second year onwards and postdocs with children who have secured a stipend or a salary and who have already full-time childcare available. So that means that the money that uh, the foundation provides is actually the icing on the cake. It allows um, these uh, women to buy extra freedom for, to, uh, uh, for example, to buy household help so that they have more time to take care of their, their children and the experiments in the lab, for example, and to buy possibly uh, uh, to pay for babysitters when the experiment in the lab goes until late in the evening, to go to conferences to get uh, the extra training that they need. Um, the stipend uh, or the, the prerequisite for this uh, uh, eligibility have some uh, uh, German components, so it's uh, available to PhD students of all, all nationalities who work in Germany or uh, of for postdocs who did their PhD in Germany. In fact, we have a number of postdocs who actually do, now do their work in the, in the US or, or elsewhere around the world. Um, so what is it uh, that uh, a successful stipend holder gets? That is, a, uh, is the stipend of 400 euros per month for up to two years, um, which uh, you can spend as, as you see fit for uh, your purposes. Um, you, uh, we also give support to jo for joint activities of stipend holders. For example, two years ago, we supported a joint training session for, for our uh, um, stipendees. Um, we and then we uh, organize an annual meeting of, uh, of, of all the uh, stipend holders in Tübingen. So in order to, to create networks, to uh, have these women talk to each other, help each other, mentor each other. And of course, we will always have some senior scientists there who will also help and mentor the scientists who are there. Um, so what do people do actually with their stipends? We do not ask them actually to list of, uh, you know, to, to tell us what exactly they are, how exactly they are spending the money. I mean, they are adults, they know best how to, how, uh, what things serve them best. Um, they cover for household help, for example, they cover for babysitter service. They buy household appliance and other type of equipment that facilitates their life with children. And they pay for courses and conferences. Um, if you have further questions, I'm very happy to answer them to, uh, along this. And now I would like to tell you a little bit about what uh, we at EMBO do um, uh, with relation, in relation to women in science. So we have been running meetings since the 2000s on the topic to try to explore um, what, uh, what the uh, reasons for the problem are, how we can solve uh, how we can get more women into science. And one thing that we did in, at the start was actually to look at our own programs. So what 
Is it, um, you know, why, for example, we notice that the success rate for women to, for our programs are lower than, uh, than that of men? So what are the reasons behind that? And this was published in, in EMBO reports in 2007. And even though this is now almost 14 years ago, um, I think the data that are in there are still pertinent because things have unfortunately not changed that much. They have changed at EMBO, but in general, I think uh, uh, um, the situation hasn't changed that much for, for, for women. Um, one obvious thing to think about is where, um, what we could do to change numbers and retain and, and, and retain women in science and, and get more women into higher positions, of course, using quota. This is extensively done, well, not that extensively, but this is certainly done in politics. It is not really done in academia, and the reason for that is that mostly um, quota, uh, you know, in academia, we believe we are a merit based, uh, we are all merit based and merit should not be should not have a gender, which unfortunately is not quite true. And so we have uh, run a workshop with a number of scientists from life science areas from uh, uh, social sciences, etc, and explored how quota can be used in academia to change uh, um, to change the numbers. And uh, in this report, we detail that as a white paper and, and guidance to how a quota could be employed. And I'll give you a few examples of how we do this at EMBO. Um, just last year, we held a conference that's called Gender Roles and Their Impact in Academia. And this will be followed by a workshop and a policy paper where we want to explore how academia and institutes themselves can change and, and support um, women in science or yeah, it can support women or parents in science in, in, in general. So this is something that uh, we will publish by the end of the year. Um, so more concretely, there's something missing. I am more concretely, EMBO uh, also together with FEBS, the Federation of European Biochemical Societies, is annually giving in a Women in Science Award, highlighting some of uh, outstanding contributions uh, by female scientists. And here you see the picture of the awardees of the last three years, Sarah Linze, Ellie Tanaka, and Molly Stevens who are not only excellent scientists, but they're also role models for women in science with the activities that are also do besides their science. Um, more concretely, in terms of EMBO policy, um, we do have a quota with regard to committee members. We have at least 30% female uh, scientists on our committees to make sure that also uh, the, the women's voices are heard. And we do analyze our programs annually uh, and, and publish the gender statistics uh, that, uh, that uh, pertain from that. Just more concretely now in terms of what do we do in our different programs to put, support parents in science. So um, uh, EMBO is, EMBO courses and workshops, EMBO is actually one of the largest, is the largest uh, organizer or funder of, of uh, conferences throughout Europe. So we have about 90 conferences, well, pre-COVID, and 90 conferences with over 12,000 participants in Europe and worldwide. And um, we require that all our conferences for a couple of years already now have at least 30% female speakers and also, of course, organizers. And this has been very successful. So any application that has less a proposal with less than 30% female speakers is outright rejected. And the actual percentage is 37 to 40% of female speakers throughout our conferences. Um, more recently, we have uh, installed, besides our normal travel, fellowships, etc., cetera, uh, child care grants for participants. That means that a participant, be they male or female, parent, uh, who needs to, you know, can, can ask for this uh, up to 500 euros to either bring the child with them or pay for a babysitter, get their mother, parent, whatever, flown in to take care of the children while they are at the conference or, as, as I said, take them with them. Um, 
Within our um, uh, postdoctoral fellowships, we provide paid parental leave. So each fellow who gets uh, a child gets a three month extension of their fellowship. Um, Part-time work is possible with our fellowship with the uh, corresponding extensions then. And we also provide dependent allowance. So of course you get more money uh, for uh, each child. And we also provide crash support for, for children under six years of age. So again, extra money to pay for, for childcare and crash care. In, uh, for the Embo Young Investigator Program, we um, allow extension of the eligibility period for applicants with children. For women, it is automatically one year. For men, it is the automatically three months. And if they have taken longer time, they just need to send us an email uh, and state that, and that time will then be taken as an extra period uh, for their eligibility. Um, membership is extended for each child born during the membership and and we also provide us young, our young investigators with child care grants for conference participation and uh, during COVID we have uh, where many of the child care facilities were closed we uh, gave extra funds to our young investigators and their lab members uh, to cover childcare so that they could continue working in the laboratory. So this is just in the nutshell what uh, uh, we have been doing at EMBO and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have.